What's up, weebs and casuals alike? And welcome to the most gloriously chaotic podcast the size of, side of the digital universe. We are Baca and Company, and we're here to provide you with a deep dive into all our favorite anime series, and specifically this week, movies. We'll cover both new and old and everything in between. For this episode, you have myself, the Sky Pirate Pal, Drew Tendo 64. I'm joined by my two co-hosts this time, and it is the Muscle Man Boss, Maz- Magically Average. Yo, that's me, Muscles. And followed along by the ancient robot with a heart, it's Frank Furter. I'm both mad and impressed you know that, just so instantly. So he's, I mean, we're, uh, we're he's, wearing, gonna... he's wearing the sweater from the fucking movie. <laughs> He's like a five-year-old movie. Like, he's like a five-year-old yeah, I, going to picture day. Is oh no! <laughs> I, I'm like a five-year-old going to Toys R Us on a Saturday morning. Yeah, whatever. Like, is, <laughs> are you going in the morning? You're gonna miss difference. Like, so I can get the, the cool toys sh- and play with them all day. But in the morning, you're missing all the quality uh, shows. I gotta, I gotta give it to, quality shows. Like what? The Flintstones and fucking Jetsons. No, he's got a point. There's Jackie Chan Adventures and Shaolin Showdown. Exactly. And then Yu-Gi-Oh! Back-to-back Yu-Gi-Oh! What are you talking about? Nah, man. I had Yu-Gi-Oh! during weekdays. That came after Pokemon. Oh, I had Spoiled on double weekdays. <laughs> what is it? What are we WB- talking about today, D20? Drew? <laughs> Shout yes, out to sir, I believe it's time to duel. Uh, today, we're going to be reviewing uh, Castle in the Sky. And wouldn't you know it, it's written and directed by Hayao Miyazaki. It's also produced by Studio Ghibli. Uh, and our music comes from the one, the only, Joe Hisasashi. And I want to shout that out really early, that I didn't realize how much of his music is just beautiful soundscapes to borrow a word and that it felt me felt me who that's inappropriate filled oh, me felt you yeah, filled, me felt is me also, filled me uh, also is inappropriate but that's <laughs> with joy ah. good sir and i wanted to just start off on a point of this is one of the more complete films it's beautifully presented in all forms and i just couldn't stop loving it enough so i earlier in the week i watched the full thing but today i did a little bit of a a recap and a quick um like rewatch and i had to stop myself a couple times just to be like awestruck by the music awestruck by the scenery and just again i wanted to touch base on the story just being a wonderful like damsel in distress but also damsel is the hero kind of film it was a, a, it's a good a, jaunty adventure. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It, to, to beat around the bush. So um, I'm going to pass it off to the person who loves it most, Magically Average, um, <laughs> and start yep. with your kind of surface level, like after not seeing Castle in the Sky for a little bit, because you saw it more recently, right? Yes. It was my first time ever seeing it. So, yeah. 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 Um, thought <laughs> it was good. No, I mean, it's you can immediately tell. Obviously, it's from 1986, so it has that immediate old vintage feel to it. Um, that gets kind of lost in a lot of the newer Ghibli films because we've we've all seen and we put out a, an episode recently. You should go listen to it on <gasps> the Boy and the Heron, and it's so interesting watching the new age Ghibli films versus the kind of classics in the Ghibli library because they're they are like there's a lot of similarities obviously because both uh the boy and the heron castle in the sky and many others are done by Hayao Miyazaki so you can draw similarities in terms of like you know themes a lot of motifs that are used the progression of plots things like that uh but it is very refreshing going back and watching one of the old ones castle in the sky being probably one of the cooler old ones i think nausicaa is so around the same so this is the very first studio ghibli ghibli movie uh nausicaa the valley of the wind was done it was directed by hayao miyazaki but it was done at a different studio it was only after that movie that it did so well that it provided the funds to be able to make Studio Ghibli Ghibli. Uh, so this is the first official work of Ghibli. Thanks, nerd. Um, You're welcome. 
but no, I mean, I I really enjoyed it. It still has its shortcomings that are very much associated with being a Ghibli Ghibli film. But I think from the simplicity of it all, it makes it a very fun watch. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. It There's not a lot for me to say just because it, one, okay. it was my first time, but also just it's, it's very straightforward. I, I don't want to say it's safe because we've, we've used that to describe other Ghibli Ghibli films. And I think that's unfair to Castle in the Sky because like, um, what the, the masterful cat, uh, we watched, we, we said that's kind of, that's pretty safe. Um, like Ponyo, we said that's relatively safe ish. Like, and we, we, you normally attribute safe to being like, it, it doesn't have these fantastical elements like you get in Howl's Moving Castle or Spirited Away or now The Boy and the Heron, where it took much larger steps, albeit could be viewed as risky in terms of like how the whole story developed and how the movie concluded, but it took those steps nonetheless. I think Castle in the Sky had moments like that, but it was much more straightforward in its delivery that it felt to what you said at the beginning, Jutendo, it felt more complete in the end and yeah. and it had a nice summation to it all. So I, I really enjoyed it. Now, to throw it to the true fan, Frank Furter, um, with with this being obviously your your favorite Ghibli film, stop adjusting increasing. your sweater to just show. I'm, it's, it's also <laughs> my shirt underneath. I'm adjusting. So it warm, He's just like, ah, oh, it's like, oh, excuse me, let me just, and then he like points subtly to the poster in the background of you Castle should. in the Sky, like, ah, oh. I can't wait until we, we, we just... uh, I can't wait till there's a JoJo movie so I can just be like, oh, <laughs> you gotta do the yeah, you gotta do the poses, right? <laughs> um. <sighs> Yeah, anyways, if you want me to just talk about this movie, I can. Gosh, um, gosh, gosh just for a little want. bit, just for a little bit, because there's one thing I want to make very clear in this film, um, and I'll get to that later, but gosh, go for it. Yeah, so for me, this is a movie that I watched countless times um, growing up. It was this and My Neighbor Totoro. Um, me and my older sister, we would watch this. We had an uncle who lived in Japan so he was like hey these are this is what the kids in Japan are watching like here's the DVDs or here's the VHSs cool. this was before DVDs here's the VHSs for these movies um and gave it to my parents and they let us watch it and so th these two movies amongst others were on repeat but um for me as you guys were kind of alluding to this being kind of a complete story i feel like this one was very much so compared to others completely storyboarded out to begin with rather than just making it up as it go and coming to a conclusion the ending doesn't seem like the the third act is really what is the crux of most animated films and i feel like with this one they let the third act breathe and the third act being um minor spoilers i mean if you haven't watched this movie which came out in 1986 Spoilers, um, but when they get to Laputa, uh, to the castle in the sky, when they that is the third act, and spending that good amount of time there was what really just brought this movie full circle and made it feel complete because you had been building up like there's this castle in the sky, there's Laputa, there's mysteries around it, there's mysteries with the people, what's going on with it, and to be able to go there and actually spend time there was amazing because other, I feel like other anime movies, no, no, I, I was going to say no pun intended, but that's not it. But basically like other anime movies, they'll take that third act or it's like they get to that climax moment of like, we reached our goal, we reached our destination and then just blow past it. And it's done in like, five ten minutes and this one they really kind of let it breathe you get to see the land or see the the kind of floating mass before all the like bad guys show up and then you have the bad guys showing up and them tearing through nature and tearing through this castle trying to find whatever it is that they're trying to find and then having it all culminate to the the face-off between uh patsu shita and uh 
uh, shoot, god dang it, um, Muska. Uh, Muska. Wow, yes. you fucking suck. You call yourself yeah, a super fan. Right. Give me that sweater. Then, uh, having having that culmination of that battle against each other, and then just having the castle crumble at the end, and kind of returning back to nature. That just letting that breathe and letting it flow naturally felt fantastic and it didn't feel like it overstayed its welcome so for me the third act of this movie was phenomenal um but i mean as you kind of mentioned to begin with uh with the music touching you drew um i this is by far probably no it, no it is by far my favorite soundtrack for any ghibli film it, it's just every track I can imagine the scene that's going through, like everything is so memorable about it because as I said before, it's just a fun adventure. It's just such a good romp. You go from location to location to location. None of them feel too rushed and none of them feel too like stayed in it. It doesn't overstay its welcome. So like having this score that kind of like flows with the film and the adventure and all the fun that they're like, the people are having on screen and sometimes not having fun on screen, just having a good score that really flows well with it. It really carries this movie a lot, not even to get into the voice acting, but yeah, yeah. We, so that's... We, we have some fucking bangers of not only just actors, but like genuine voice actors. So that's, that's kind of where I, I wanted to jump in is number one to back up the music and just say, um, the way the it swells and it peters off and it coasts like you can really feel this film. It's it's a audio visual experience. But to piggyback on you saying uh, with each location, whether we're in town, we're at um, Sheeta's house or not Sheeta's house, pa Pazu's house, um, and then just jumping around to everyone else, like everything feels lived in. It feels like real it feels used we have the trains we have the airships so just i i love the intricacies of all the working mechanisms and the animation that was going on so it was like very surprising that this in 1986 was so well done when you have maybe not the best showing from other films of the era except maybe like the transformers film was probably the next closest thing that was animated to this level of like tender I don't know, care yeah, exactly. Like the, they love the content, they love the story. So, um, as Frank alluded to with uh, the cast, so just to start off, this was dubbed in 2003 uh, by Disney because they bought a ton of the rights to all these Ghibli films. So, uh, Pazu, uh, voiced by James Vanderbeek. Sheeta was voiced by Anna Paquin. Um, her younger self, so when she's the learning the spells and talking to her grandma, that's Debbie Durberry. I don't really Derryberry. Um, don't Jimmy know who that is. Jimmy, Jimmy Neutron. Neutron. Okay. Um, fun one is the the sky pirate Dola is voiced by Cloris Leachman, and if you don't know who Cloris Leachman is, uh, I'll give you two examples. She's in a very weird cameo in The Office with in a movie with Jack Black as the grandma. Uh, but she's also the grandmother in Raising Hope. And she's just phenomenal. Like, like she has more credits and more places she's been where she's been a better actor, but she's phenomenal. For Muska, like, as a kid watching this film, it's Mark Hamill. And I watched it as a young kid and went, Is that the Joker? I think that's the Joker. The Joker's Mark Hamill, right? And I, like went over, grabbed the DVD and like looked at the back cover. I was like, holy crap, it is. Um, and then coming out of left field as the general is Jim Cummings. So like, so I see so everyone good. laughing here Pete, about G Pete the cat. Well, and not just, Pooh. and yeah, exactly. All of the, these fucking Disney characters, Jim Cummings is incredible. He's, yeah. And he's so, he's like, he exploded in this role to just like, be the angry general, and it was perfect. Mm -hmm. um, for, <laughs> uh, we have uh, Uncle Palm, who's the the guy who doesn't like the light down in the caves. That's Richard Allen Desart, and I don't really know who that is because I live in a hole. Um, we also have like uh, John Hostetter, uh, Michael McShane, Mandy Patinkin, <laughs> like. <laughs> 
again, this must have been one of those roles where he's like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll tell my kids I was in a Ghibli film. It's got to be that. Um, then we get some of the Simpsons people out here. We got Tress McNeil as uh, Sheeta's mother, but she also does a couple other roles there in the background. Um, the old engineer is Eddie Fearson, who's just, uh, he does like Wreck-It Ralph, uh, Trans Hotel Transylvania. He does a lot of those like background voices. Uh, and then again, out of left field as the train operator, we got Matt K. Miller, who is best known for like Tenshi Misaki on the Tenshi Muyo original dubs that are out there. So like very unique cast, shall we say, but that's me gushing about those people. Um, I'm going to throw it over to my co-host to, to gush about their favorite voices in the film. Yeah, you were saying that Mark Hamill being the Joker. And, and for me, I wasn't watching the Batman animated series. I was watching Star Wars, amongst other things. And to me, it was like, wait a second. That's Luke. That's my boy. That's that's my guy. And I was just like, this is, <laughs> this is insane. I didn't think that they could do that. Um, yeah. So it was just... It's a lovely cast. This is one, like, we, we gush about it every week we record one of these Ghibli films that just Disney went and just got the talent. The, it, like, later on, I feel like they got a bunch of, like, actual actors to voice act, but this was like, hey, we got voice actors to do the voice acting, and I think that this is one of the stronger films for that because, as we've said this is such a kind of kooky, fun adventure. These voices don't need to be overly serious. They need to be fun characters. And everybody is so different in this film, but plays a part and they play it wonderfully. The, the, they give so much life to these, these characters. And it's just one of the few reasons why I think that this is my favorite film in the, the Ghibli verse. So yeah, it's, it's, Voice acting aside, like this, this movie is just phenomenal in my opinion. I know that a lot of people aren't a huge fan of it because it is kind of childish, it is kind of goofy, it is, you know, it is what it is. But to me, like analyzing these movies week after week, this still holds up really well in the fact that it feels like a more complete story of it not rushing anything, taking its time and building this world out for you. So, um, yeah. Also, the first, like, the first time I watched this as a kid and, you know, or at least understanding this movie and, like, you know, understanding real life because, you know, when you're a kid and you watch things, sometimes you're like, ooh, pretty colors. But then once you actually learn what a story is and, you know, what a plot twist is, when uh, Muska came out as the, uh, you know, a relative of... Laputa's uh, ancestors, I was just shocked. I was like, what? Granted, you could see it coming from a mile away from like the very beginning if you're an adult, but like as a kid, I was like, mind blown. But <laughs> I don't know. It just, it, it, this movie is one of a few that really brings out the inner child in me. And, and I forever, this holds a very special spot in my heart. So, yeah. Magically average? I, I don't know if I have much else really to say. Um, I I guess to the point on voice acting, this is probably the one Ghibli Ghibli film where I thought the voice acting was like what you'd find in any sort of animated film. And I, I think you touched on it just now, but I guess to, to put a period to it and, and everything... This is like the one Ghibli Ghibli film where they were just like, we want the voice actors to sound and feel exactly like how we would imagine these characters to be in real life. And that's what they got. Like, they didn't get the most stellar actors to perform the roles. They got the best voice actors to encapsulate the personality, the the style, the... I guess overall characteristics of each character. And I think that fits well, but it's probably one of the few Ghibli Ghibli films where I watched it and I was like, yeah, it was, it was good voice acting. It wasn't anything to write home about, you know, but it was good. And I, yeah, I think that helps the movie though, because you're not distracted by like the characters. You're more 
in tune with all the different events going on because it if, from we haven't really talked about like the progression of the movie except for what happens in act three but like the events that take place are pretty quick like movie starts out with Sheeta on an airship she jumps out the window uh floats down into a coal mine gets captured gets captured gets saved by Patsu uh they immediately are like we're having fun we're having a blast you came down from the sky alien girl yay let's let's go do stuff oh shit you're getting chased uh okay townsfolk help and then like chaos ensues the army is apparently following them along with pirates like the pirates want she does jewel because the jewel is what gives her the power to like do all these fantastical things like float down from the sky after plummeting headfirst for millions and millions of feet it seemed like um and then they find the creepy old guy in the the cave that talks to rocks and he's like the rocks speak to me and then the, he's like fuck the rocks are too loud go away Shh, jesus <laughs> And Put then that one stone away. It's making a ruckus. Yeah, everything is de- uh, a ruckus. ruckus. God damn it. Yeah. Um, like like moments in the movie move pretty quick. Like it it does progress at a very nice pace. Um, I, I will say there's a bit of a lull in like the bid like the middle ish towards end of Act Two, leading into Act Three. But I I think that's just sort of like a preparation time to get to Laputa. So it's understandable, but I mean, the movie moves pretty quickly. Um, And so I feel like it's nice having characters that are there and not characters that are in your face because that could derail kind of what the purpose of the movie is, which is to have you be on this adventure with them. So I appreciate that piece of the the voice acting, but um, yeah, overall, I mean, again, I, I think there's not, there's not an area of the movie that I think less of. I don't think I'd be gushing so much as Frank is, even though it is my first time. Like it is a good movie. It's probably in my top five, maybe, maybe just barely squeaks in top five for Ghibli Ghibli. Um, I'll take it. Yeah. I, it, for, for me, it has, and I know this is the first film underneath the Ghibli Ghibli umbrella. So maybe it's just kind of their entry point. Like they're just, they don't want to dive headfirst in. They just kind of want to dip their foot in, test the waters, make sure they're going to get the audience at least in the theaters to watch it. And then they'll expand from there. You know, maybe that was the approach. Who knows? But I do think it it lacks that kind of ghibli ghibli magic that we see in a lot of like the later films so i i didn't have that same feeling watching it this time around maybe it's different too what like watching it in the theater versus watching it at home i have been going with my wife to see ghibli ghibli films in theater and it is way more in like enriching just to see it on a big screen than it is to just pop it on the tv at home um even movies like we had reviewed uh, The Wind Rises, like that movie, my wife hated, <laughs> like just absolutely <laughs> despised. Uh, I found it entertaining. I, I didn't think it was great by any means, but I, I did like the that it was such a large, like a far deviation from the regular library of Ghibli Ghibli films. Yeah, it was much more personal. Yeah. Would I have thought the same thing watching it at home? Honestly, probably not, because you don't get that same experience of like the the... Per, like the audio effects in the theater with it being completely dark you get the larger screen like it's a whole immersive experience um so if, in this case like for castle in the sky maybe maybe it would be a different feel to the movie for me if i had seen it in theaters i don't know but i i does it doesn't mean that i didn't enjoy it it was still a really good film i thought it was to what everyone's been saying it was the most complete film which is funny seeing it as how it was the first ghibli ghibli film and then something happened along the way and they were just like (laughs) storyboarding what's that um and yeah i like the characters are great the the sound track and and all the sound effects the sound design in general was superb um as always so yeah i think this is this is honestly like we always talk when it comes to other anime like what's a good 
intro anime to get someone into, you know, anime if they haven't seen it. And we always throw out different shows. I think in terms of like Ghibli Ghibli films, this one's probably the best to get someone to start watching, like maybe like your, tr- say, quote unquote, traditional anime films. I think this is a safe bet because it's, again, story moves at a very nice pace. The It's not overly complex uh it is really pretty to look at even though it is from 1986 like the animation quality is still superb and you have a very complete beginning to end movie with a we'll we'll say i mean it's a good conclusion there was a little bit there they could have added but it was good enough um and i i think that's probably again why i liked it too i think that this is a nice intro piece to those who are unfamiliar with you know what anime films are or could be it's a gru- it's a really good starting point i will just say i like while we're recording this none of you can hear it, but i'm listening to the soundtrack on spotify oh my god and like i'm just going from scene to scene in my movie i was like oh yeah that was a good part that was a good part like currently i'm listening to the song where uh, Patsu and uh, Shida agree to join Dola and the Pirates, and it's just that like upbeat kind of like just tempo of a song with just it's so fun. I, it, to me, I I really do truly believe that the music does make it. Some of it, the music isn't the greatest because th- they go with a lot of synth for different serious scenes, which kind of is a little off putting. But when you have you know, them joining the pirates, when you have the chase scene in the first town uh, and you have, like, them working on the ship, amongst other things, like, these songs are so upbeat and fun and they kind of go with the pacing of the movie that it just makes it a more enjoyable viewing than it would be with just kind of, like, a traditional background song of, you know, genericness. So so I, I think with the that, I mean... We haven't even touched upon what the actual plot of the movie is. I kind of went uh, through it. Kind of. Yeah, we we did a quick summary. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, but there's um, a castle in the sky. They're trying to get to <gasps> it. The end. <laughs> Guess what, everybody? And, they get to it. And like wow. like any Hayao Miyazaki film as well from the early days, it's always about technology and how nature prevails. Yeah, it's all preserve about the nature. Don't yes. let technology overrule you and your decisions. Preserve the earth. Yeah. So love the uh, earth. It's it's yeah, it, it's a very fun movie for me. It, it brings me back to my childhood, to much more simpler days, and this is a very much more simpler movie, and I think that's what I really enjoy about it. I want to talk about for a second the fact that you're actively listening to the soundtrack while yeah. we're recording. And yeah having the mental Your voices are louder louder well, than the i assume I, yeah. you're not like what what huh? <laughs> what did you, say, you say darling like <laughs> but the, the fact that you're doing fire. like you're doing like i would have to do mental gymnastics to like be able to focus on what everyone's saying and then what i'm about to say next while listening like if i i could name you the intro songs like if you played me the intro songs to all the jojo parts i could tell you what jojo part is part of i can even tell you what like if it's if it's the the first half of the season or the second half of the season some even have three uh but the fact that you're actually listening and being like that scene was good one nerd two bravo you have very good concentration that i didn't think you had that's my ADHD <laughs> at work. That's why I watch so many dubs while I work. Um, Let's yeah. go. It, it's kind of a testament to how many times I've actually watched this movie. To be completely honest with you, I haven't watched this movie to rewatch for this podcast. I just know this movie very, very well. <laughs> I'll brag about it. I no, like it's not that I want to brag about it. I just fucking love this movie. I yes. just didn't have. Yes, I also Frank. just. Frank, we get it. I also it. did not have the time to rewatch it, but yeah, you were, anywho. You were a cool kid that had a cool uncle that went to Japan and brought you back cool stuff, and you got to watch all that cool stuff, and now you're a nerd. Yeah. Thanks, you Uncle You did Rick. it. Love you, buddy. <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, right now I'm on the scene where the robot awakens in the castle. Or Stop. In the, the... Stop. No one cares. So <laughs> No one cares because no one can hear the soundtrack, okay? 
Yeah, Drew, was... give us your thoughts because we've kind of gushed about it. <laughs> I mean, you've only given given us surface level. Surface you, level? Um, well, no, no, may... no, no, no. Give us more because you've only I, given us surface. Level. I know that's what I was gonna. Oh, oh, oh. I love this movie. Um, it also holds a special place in my heart because um, as a kid, uh, my parents. Well, they technically are still divorced as an adult. But anyways, um, I went between my parents' houses a lot on weekends. And I didn't have a lot at one house versus the other. So I would bring like my collection of DVDs. And one year, um, I got Castle in the Sky. I got like three or four different Ghibli movies. And I was like, that's what I'm going to do. So like what I would do is my brother would like take the PlayStation Two, run upstairs and he'd, he'd play on the bigger TV, but I would like pull out the DVD player that we had down in the basement. And honestly, I watched castle in the sky for maybe a whole weekend once. And I was like, this is just a really good movie. And then I would switch it out, put in Austin powers Two because again, I'm a child watched Austin powers Two, And I was like, okay, that's a movie. And I go back, eh, let's put castle in the sky back in and I watch castle in the sky again. Or then I'd watch reader die or try gun or whatever else I had. And it was just like, it's a very warm and comforting movie. If you're looking for the cozy movie out of what's out there, definitely this is your perfect movie for a cool winter's Eve and a cup of hot cocoa. Honestly, um, the plot being what it is and very strong ties, like we said, as nature versus technology, um, how the two can't really work together and how essentially the military is Ghibli's version of human bad. Um, it's, it's still a great movie. And if you aren't looking for the super detailed analytical plot that makes you think it's still a great movie. And if you are the person that wants to go in down the plot holes and realize that Miyazaki has been doing this for years, that he's always like, no, like let's, let's protect the planet. Let's show our respect. Let's be better. Like this is kind of where it started. Like Nazca is essentially the, the first time he does that. Cause that's his first movie. And that's all the, all the movies about. Um, but Please don't make me um actually you. What? Nausicaa was not his first directorial movie. Well, no, no. I mean, like, his first movie where he went into, like, mm, plant gotcha, plants gotcha, gotcha. and, cool, cool. and the earth yeah. and stuff. Sorry, I thought um, you were saying directorial. No, no, no. I was no, like, no. oh, no, but Frank paused Sorry. his music, like, clenched no, his it's bottle. So going. <laughs> clenched his bottle <laughs> and was about to, ready to rip you a new one. Oh, boy. Oh. I'm going to talk to you I'm about a... the castle in the sky. <laughs> Then there's also that trance song that's uh, Castles in the Sky. Um, but anyways, it's a movie. I love it. It's beautiful, and I can't recommend it enough. It's probably, I want to say, in my top three for anime movies. Yeah, no, I would I would put it in my top three as well. Um, yeah. I can't quite give it the number one because I do see some of the drawbacks and some of the, like the... Um, I don't want to say ageness of it, but how things certain things haven't aged well. Um, so I I can't say full heartedly that yes, this is my number one animated film, but um, it is in my top three, if not my number two. Beautiful. Final so, thoughts, guys. I've gushed a bunch. This, I know I was I was aiming phenomenal. at the guy at the bottom, but he's, I know, he says but, he's done. I, it's final thoughts. Uh, no clue. Okay. So the, I'm Go going to leave spirited away. <laughs> <laughs> if you like castle in the sky, watch the better version. <laughs> no, that'd be Howl's anyway. moving castle. That's true. Um, yeah, spirited away would be more so like death in the sky. Yeah. And Basically. remind me what are, what's coming up next, Frank? Oh, we haven't discussed that. I don't yeah, know. Did. Have we? We put, we had them. Hold on. Oh my uh, god. I don't think we did. Why We're would running out soon. Like Is are we watching uh, that horrible Nausicaa. the worm and the I think the... Is the next? <laughs> yeah, Castle, then Nausicaa, and then we can do Howl. Cool beans. Yay.
We're not oh, doing the worm do one. <laughs> or C? No. Oh, wait, we... worm. <laughs> you know what? Red one? turtle? No, not red turtle. <laughs> no, isn't it like the uh, the earworm and the... Oh, oh no, earwig? <laughs> no, yeah, we are not yeah. touching that. Like, like, I will pay you guys not to see that movie. Sweet. I'll Venmo. <laughs> um, I wanted to leave us with a fun fact. The voice actress for Luffy was Pazu in the original Japanese version. Oh, that's fantastic. I could see that. So. I could see that. <laughs> I can see Luffy saving people from a castle in the sky. Yeah. Well, with that, I want to thank everyone who's been with us this far. We truly appreciate all the love that you've been showing us lately on our socials and our and our shorts. I'm Drew Tendo. That's Magically Average. And I guess somehow we still have Frank Furter around. Thanks for uh, watching. Love you to bits. If you need us to find us, send us an email at bakakopodcast at gmail.com. Or find us on socials. You know. You can like find us. You people. know where we live. No, you don't. You don't know where I live. The castle in the sky. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ, I walked into that one. All right. I'm, I'm muting myself. Good night, everybody. Hey.